Hi everybody. So in this tutorial here, we're going to be looking at using a Bunsen burner safely. We're going to start off here with this Bunsen burner here on the little left here. We're going to take this rubber hose here and connect it to the gas valve. Basically what's going to happen here is gas is going to come along this rubber hose. It's going to come sideways through and out the top. For this Bunsen burner here, there's two things we can adjust. There's a wheel here at the bottom here that we can either twist it one way here. As it gets farther from the base here, it gets looser or twist it the other way. This twisting motion here actually controls a valve that controls how much gas actually comes in in a certain time, therefore controlling how tall the flame eventually gets. The other thing that we can adjust for this Bunsen burner here is along the top. This whole top portion here can be uh, loosened up or tightened. What this second part here actually controls, there's a tiny slit here that may not actually be visible here, but basically what happens here is, depending on how open the slit here is, there's a certain amount of oxygen that can actually come in that can actually burn with the flame. We know that for combustion reactions, we need oxygen here. I generally tell people, keep this at its tightest setting here. Uh, as we uh, want to burn more oxygen here with the flame, change up that ratio here, I can steadily loosen this up. And as we'll see shortly, is we can actually change it from an orange flame to a blue flame, wildly different in temperatures. Just before I demonstrate how this Bunsen burner works here, I'm just going to show you a slightly different design of the Bunsen burner as well. For these Bunsen burner designs here, you see that air slit here a lot better. Again, there's a little metal sheath here that can control how open or how closed, how much oxygen actually comes through. Uh, the downside about these Bunsen burners here is there is no wheel at the bottom. I won't be able to control the height of the flame uh, using that wheel. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just go right back to the source. We know that when the switch is in the perpendicular position, we know that it's off. If I dial it fully parallel, it's fully uh, open. If I find that the flame is too tall at that setting here, I can shimmy this back and forth here. As this controls the gas coming through, I can also control the height of the flame as well. So uh, I'm gonna demonstrate this Munson burner here, um, how uh, we're gonna get it going. We're gonna start off here with the gas valve here. I'm gonna flip this gas valve here on. If you listen closely, you might actually be able to hear the gas um, coming through already. The reason why there's no fire yet is all reactions, combustions are no different, all reactions require uh, some energy input, some activation barrier, some, um, some trigger to get the reaction going. Uh, the trigger here for a combustion reaction can be as simple as a match. Uh, I don't have a match here, but what I do have here is a metal striker. Uh, these ones here can be reused, so that's why I tend to prefer using these ones here. If you've never used these metal strikers before here, there's actually two arms to this striker. Uh, I can actually pull this left hand arm out here. We see that this left hand arm here is actually holding a rock. It's actually a very sharp flint here along the outside here. Um, as you use this Bunsen, Bunsen burner uh, for longer or the striker for longer here, sometimes this flint here steadily wears down. Uh, you can always replace that whenever you need. But as I just put this uh, back into the metal striker here, right now that flint, that rock there, is barely uh, contacting the arm holding the back plate. So that if I dial this one here left to right, it's actually not producing any sparks. What's challenging about using these metal strikers is we actually need to use our fingers here, take this arm, actually push it into the plate itself. We're actually intentionally scraping the back of the plate. And if I do that, as I pull it to the right, that's actually gonna generate the sparks that we need to actually light this Bunsen burner. If that wasn't hard enough here, because the gas is coming upwards here, what we're gonna need to do is actually hold it downwards. We're gonna take the arm holding the rock, scrape it against the back plate, and again, produce those sparks that we need, okay? So, Let's turn on the gas here, parallel means open. Uh, if you're finding that, oh, you're striking a couple of times, still nothing, good idea to turn off the gas valve, wave away some of the gas, we don't want that building up. And then when you're ready to go again here, let's open that up, let's produce those sparks there. Um, there we go, our Bunsen burner is struck, although this fire here is way too tall. So as I uh, explained here, we can actually take that dial here along the bottom. I'm gonna twist it one way here as it gets closer to the base of the Bunsen burner, uh, less gas is coming through and therefore I can control the height of the flame. If I want it taller, I can definitely make it looser again. We generally want the Bunsen burner to be about that tall there. That way anyone that walks by, the draft won't pick up that fire and become a fire risk. Right now here, remember we had dialed this uh, metal sheath here so that it's basically blocking out the air slit. There is still a little bit of oxygen because all fires need oxygen to burn. But as I steadily open this up, we should be able to change up the proportion, how much gas is burning and how much oxygen, and you see it's actually changing from an orange flame to an almost invisible blue flame here. And in fact, as I just keep going here, let's see if I can get it to the setting here. Open it up a little bit. 
Uh, I don't know if uh, you can see it very well. Let me see if I can pull out a white background for you. So we definitely have a blue flame here. It's almost invisible to the naked eye right now. But if you look really closely here, what's happening is we actually have two parts to this flame. We actually have a brighter blue cone around the middle, and we have a deeper blue cone along the outside. The hottest part of the Bunsen burner here is the top of the inner bright blue cone. So if you can imagine the bright blue cone here is along the bottom, if I hold anything at the top of that bright blue cone there, that's actually going to be the hottest portion, about 1500 degrees, twice as hot as a regular fire. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to show you that blue flame here. If I accidentally just sort of walked away from the Bunsen burner and people weren't um, aware that this Bunsen burner was uh, on, it can become a uh, danger. So what we're going to do here, let's say I needed to step away, it's easy enough to restrike later on. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip off the gas. As you flip off the gas, the Bunsen burner goes off. I can actually strike it again when I'm ready to use it again. Okay. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks, guys.